Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another real tale with you. The today's story is about theft. A theft story in which the thief made many people foolish and stole from a place where no one could even think of stealing, and there are many mysteries which are not solved yet. Year 1976. In those days, there were some banks in the world that were very rich, and these banks were very famous. The security in these banks was also very strong, and no one could think of stealing here because the security of these banks was so strong that no one could escape it. And there was a bank in a city of France named Society General Bank. The building of this bank was an old building, and the people of this bank had more trust in its walls and doors than in guards or security. The gate of this bank weighed 20 tons, and there were iron bars on these walls. There were no windows in this building, nor was there any other way out except the main door. And when all the bank employees came in, the gate would be opened, and when all the people left the bank, it would be closed. On July 19, 1976, in the morning, all the bank employees were standing outside the bank, and it was time to open the bank. The man who had the duty to open the bank tried to open the gate, but it wouldn't budge. They thought back to a few times before when the gate had jammed but eventually opened because the company that had made the gate was called by the bank employees and they came and opened the door. Now, it was past 9 a.m. and all the bank employees were waiting for the gate to open. It had been more than an hour and people had started arriving, needing to withdraw or deposit money. This incident happened before the time of high technology when all banking transactions had to be done in person at banks as there were no ATMs or phone banking services, the crowd started to gather, but the bank's door remained closed. The bank employees were also getting very worried because the door showed no signs of opening and the crowd was growing. They tried many times to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Eventually, they called the security company and they were called to open the door. When the security company employees arrived and tried to open the door, it still wouldn't open. They tried many times, but they failed. It had been almost three hours, but the door still wouldn't open. They decided to make a hole in the door using a drill machine and check where the lock was stuck from the inside. When the drilling work started, it took a lot of time because the door was 20 tons and had so much security that no one could open it with a drill machine. There was a mechanism in the door that prevented it from opening with the drill machine. Then, when a hole was made with the drill machine, a security company employee put his hand inside, and when he tried to place his hand in a place where there was a lock, he was surprised because someone had jammed the door from the outside in such a way that the door could not be opened at all. Someone had placed something there that jammed the lock. And then, when it was discovered that the part had been jammed through welding, the security company employee was surprised that who could do this to the door? And then they started looking at all the walls of the building. There was no sign of any wall breaking. The roof was also perfectly intact, and people really started to wonder what had happened. The person had jammed the door from the inside and had disappeared because there was no way out showing them. Then they thought they should make a hole so that officials could go inside and see what was happening there. Firstly, they thought made a hole in gate, but the gate was very heavy. It takes a lot of time to make a hole. So then they made such a big hole in the wall next to the door that anyone could go through it. And when this hole was made, an employee of the security company went inside and was surprised to see the bank because all the lockers of the bank were broken and everything was scattered everywhere. And then more people came inside the bank after him. And when the security company's person looked at the door from inside, they saw that the locked area was sealed with welding in such a way that no one could open the door from the outside. Then they opened the door from the inside, and when people came inside the bank, they were surprised to see inside the bank, and then they started looking for the man, but they couldn't find any trace of the person. They only found some holes in the ground. The holes were like some tunnel type, and seeing this, those people immediately informed the police. Now the police come to the bank, the police look around the bank, but they don't even found anything. Then they see a message on a wall, and the police think that this message was written by the thief who cleaned his hands on the bank. This message was written in French, which meant without weapons, without violence. And then it was found out that there was a theft of 100 million in this bank. Now the police investigate the tunnel. Now what is in the tunnel? And where is the tunnel going? 
It is only known after entering the tunnel. Then a team of police went into the tunnel, and when they reached the other side of the tunnel, they found out that this tunnel comes out in the city's underground sewerage, and that sewerage line was coming out at a deserted place. Now the entire team of police was going there, and now they thought that the robbery was done through this tunnel, and they returned back through this tunnel. The police found some holes from inside the bank, and they also found some clues in the tunnel. Inside the bank, the police found a lot of food and drink items, along with a gas cylinder and welding machine, and now the police were completely convinced that this theft was a premeditated conspiracy. Not only that, when the police were going from the bank to the tunnel, towards sewerage, they also checked the ventilation there, so that when those people are going from the sewerage to the bank, and from the bank to the sewerage through the tunnel, they don't have any problem of breathing. That's why the thief made ventilation. A thief carried out a robbery with such a big conspiracy in a bank where there was so much strong security. Now, this incident has started spreading across the country. News of this robbery started appearing in newspapers and on television. People were astonished to hear about how someone could commit such a big theft. The police were under a lot of pressure because they had no clue about the thief. Even after three months of investigation, they had no information about the thief. No one had seen the thief and no one knew about the tunnel he used. Now the police were getting very worried because without any clues, how could they catch the thief? And the pressure on them was increasing from the public, accusing the police of not doing enough to solve the case. In October 1976, a girl went to the police and told them that she knew everything about this theft. The police were relieved that after three months, they might get some clues. They asked the girl what she knew about the theft, and she told them that her boyfriend, who was not very rich before, had suddenly become very rich in a few days. She suspected that he might be the thief because he had no money before the bank robbery, and after the robbery, he became very rich. She felt it was her responsibility as a responsible citizen to inform the police. Then the police got the name of her boyfriend from the girl and went to his house. There, they arrested him. Three months later, the police caught one of the thieves involved in the robbery. Then the police started interrogating him, and he slowly started revealing the names of the people in his gang. The police arrested all those people, but they were still not sure if these people could commit such a big theft because they were just small-time thieves. They couldn't have carried out such a big theft. Then the police kept questioning them repeatedly, because they were not sure if these people could commit a theft of 100 million. Because to commit this theft, a lot of intelligence was needed. Only a person with a lot of evil intelligence could commit this theft. And when the police kept questioning them repeatedly, two people from the gang finally opened their mouths and revealed that the mastermind of their gang, who is the mastermind of this theft, has not been caught yet. After being questioned by the police, he revealed the man's name was Albert Spaggiari. This man was from Italy and was a photographer who had a great passion for photography as well as for finding hidden treasures. He always lived with the hope of discovering some treasure that he could unearth, but after a lot of searching and reading many books, he did not find any treasure. Then he thought that instead of finding hidden and buried treasures, it would be better to clear his hands on a treasure that was right in front of people's eyes and that treasure was the money and jewelry kept in the bank vaults. He had already made a complete plan to rob the bank. He had made up his mind that whatever happens, he will loot this bank and spend his life with pride and luxury. The police started chasing him to catch the thief, and after a short time, the police arrested him. When the police arrested him and questioned him, he said that he had a great passion for finding hidden treasures. I was yearning to find such treasures in my life. Then he said that when I came to this city, I opened my account in this bank, and after opening my account in this bank, I came to know that this bank is the largest bank in this city, and it has a lot of money in it. Then he said that I opened an account in this bank so that I could come to this bank again and again and plan to rob it, and in this way, I also took a locker on my name from there, and I had also taken photos of the bank from all sides secretly. Then he said that I came to know that the bank's security is only in its walls and gates. He thought that this bank is so big, and everyone is saying that the security of this bank is very strong, 
so there is any security alarm in it. So one day he put an alarm in his watch and put it in his locker, and when the alarm rang, no security alarm rang. Then after two days, he put an alarm in his watch, and when the alarm rang in the evening, then again no security alarm rang. Now he had agreed that there is no security alarm in this bank, because if there was a security alarm there, then the alarm would have been ringing in the locker, but it did not ring any sensors. From morning till evening, people were working there. The alarm was ringing in the locker at its time, but no one knew about it. And he thought that robbing this bank would be very easy because it didn't have any security system, no alarms, no cameras, nothing. Then he said, now I will rob this bank. Then one day, disguised as a fake engineer, he went to the municipal office. There, he took the city map and that showed him the sewer line. It showed him that there is a sewer line, which is a sewer line of the city, is cut at one place, and if a tunnel is made from this place, it directly comes out of the bank. Then he went near the sewer line, entered it, and started to see what work needs to be done in it. Up to this point, everything was fine. But when he had to make an eight meters long tunnel from the sewer line to the bank's line, he thought that making such a big tunnel was not a job for one person. Then he found out about a gang in the city that was already notorious for theft and was an expert in making such tunnels. Then he went to those people and told them all his planning, and those people were greedy too. They also joined in this planning. But they told Albert that it would take a lot of time to make this tunnel, and this tunnel can only be made at night because during the day someone could see them making this tunnel. And then the work of making the tunnel started, and it took about two months to make this tunnel. And then after two months when this tunnel was made, now these people were waiting for a holiday in the bank. And two days later, it was Saturday and Sunday, which is when the bank is closed, and these people chose Saturday as their day, and then these people took their things and went into the tunnel, taking their food items, cutter, welding machine, and entered the bank through the tunnel. These people stayed in the bank for a full 27 hours. They comfortably had their lunch, breakfast, and dinner there in the bank, and then those people jammed the gate's lock with the welding machine so that even if they were caught and someone wanted to caught them, they couldn't came because, apart from the gate, there was no other way that someone could enter the bank from, and this is how they committed the theft of 100 million. When all these people were caught, they were brought in front of the judge. All the evidence and everything was against Albert, and then the judge sentenced him to imprisonment for full life. Now they were caught, but the stolen money had neither been seen by anyone, nor had he disclosed that, nor did the police know where the money were. On the day Albert was sentenced, the judge asked him where the stolen money was. Then Albert wrote a code word on a paper and told the judge that if he wanted the money he should decode this code. But the judge said, You decode this code yourself. Then Albert said, I will not decode it in front of the entire court. I will decode it alone in front of you, and for this, then the judge took Albert to his chamber, leaving everyone else outside. Then the judge asked him to reveal the record of the court, and he started telling them everything, and hearing this, the judge became very confused and was in such confusion. There was a window in his chamber, and suddenly Albert jumped from there, and when he did, there was a bike standing under the window, and he escaped by sitting on the bike and he fled in such a way that no one could catch him afterwards. The police searched for him for a long time, but they couldn't find him. Time passed like this, and then came June 8, 1989, and the news came from Italy that Albert had died. This news was told by Albert's mother, and when asked how he died, she said that even I don't know. Some people had left my son's dead body outside our house and ran away, and it is still a mystery who killed Albert, who were those people, and what enmity they had with Albert that led to his death. This is still unknown to people. So, this was today's story. Thank you for joining us on this journey today. We hope you enjoyed the content and found it valuable. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos like this one.